Hi Nathan here again with another True Tech troubleshooting tutorial. Today I want to combine a couple of lessons we've learned and put them together into a meaningful application. Um, so the prerequisite for today's tutorial is the form flow lifecycle tutorial and the radio button tutorial. I'm going to put those two things together into one solution. So we see here on our lifecycle designer we have a, a sample form that I've built and it's got uh, th right now three questions uh, and it has a radio button in the center um, that asks the question yes or no do you want to answer question number three and so the purpose of this is to avoid displaying a question that may or may not be necessary so I haven't sought to minimize space on the layout of this uh, but that's not the point of the video we could we could do that if we needed to but the basic purpose here is to show you how to allow the user to answer yes or no and then create a, an effect where a question will be hidden uh, on a form if if it's not needed or up and or it's hidden until it is needed sometimes on forms you have scenarios where as a person's pulling uh, filling out the form uh, if they answer yes to a certain inquiry there will be sub questions that need to be asked and if they answer no then those sub questions don't need to be asked and what Adobe allows you to do is to hide those sub questions using the method I'm going to show you so that uh, if, if the customer or, the, or the, the form filler doesn't need to see those then they're not displayed and uh, he's not uh, his, ex his user experience is not encumbered by them and so we have four questions actually on our hierarchy you can see them here one two three and four but question number three is hidden right now and it's hidden by using what we talked about in the form flow tutorial uh, a sub form that's nested inside of our main page here and that sub form is hidden so if we make that sub form visible then question three appears but if we make it hidden then it disappears and so the reason we're doing that at design time is because we don't want to display the question until we have the answer to the yes or no question here and uh, so if I preview the form um, of course I can ask answer question one and I can answer question two and then do I want to answer question three yes or no if I say no nothing happens and I can come down here and answer question four but let's say in a different scenario I wanted, to, I wanted to answer question three well then I toggle the radio button to yes question three appears and I can make my answer accordingly of course if I change my mind and I don't want to answer that I can toggle it again but if I change my mind a third time my answer is still there like I originally typed and so how does this work well once again like in the form flow tutorial we have a main page with the content set to flowed top to bottom and we have three subforms underneath one of them positioned that's the one at the top here to get the effect of uh, the question being um, indented a little bit and our title being separated we don't have to have this positioned we could make it flowed but then that creates a left justification there I don't want and so I left that at positioned and then we have subform number two that's hidden uh, at design time but we can make it visible it's also set to float so that when we hide it uh, not only does it disappear but we also get back the real estate that question three would take up so there's no gap between this object and this object and then of course we have subform three that's question number four and it's set to float as well uh, and so this nesting creates a, a really crisp user experience where things disappear and they also give back the space that would be required to, to take them up so now here in our scripting ed editor we can see the JavaScript that lies behind the click event of the yes no radio button list so we s select that in our hierarchy and we select the click event and we get this if then else statement and here it is if the value of the yes no radio button list is one equal to one 
then uh, do something. Anything else besides one, do something else. Keep the subform to hidden. And so the reason we do that is because we the the value of one is when the yes radio is chosen and the value of two is when the no is chosen or if there's no value at all meaning zero or, so, or you know nil, null we don't want anything to appear we don't want anything to happen so we just say if it's one something happens anything else it remains hidden so back to our form one thing you need to consider is when you're making a radio button list the binding tab specify item value whatever the radio button values are here must correspond to what your JavaScript has here. So once again, when we preview the document, uh, we, can, we can make it appear or not based on our choice here. So I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you can use it to make great forms. Like always, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel for more great videos, or uh, ask any questions you have. Remember to visit our website, truetechtroubleshooting.blogspot.com, for related uh, issues with lifecycle and questions and videos. And always remember, in lifecycle, as in all computing, problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. We'll see you next time.